Hello, welcome to the video. Uh, basically what I'll be doing today in this video is showing you guys how to use your AP and ILS since I can combine the two fairly easy in a hopefully short video. Uh, yeah, let me crank that back on. Music. Um, so I live in Edmonton still daily here I figure it'd be a good to use uh, basically I'm gonna do a short fright and I'll show you what it looks like prior so setting up an ILS is important from the flight manager as well here for flight planner um, basically if you want to choose your airport set departure choose where you're going to we're going to Calgary next thing over here where it says IFR it's already selected for us, but usually it's direct GPS, which you have selected. You want to choose low or high. A high as long as your plane can go about 30k over. Uh, FL 300, if you want to get technical about it. I uh, choose low. Once you choose your method, I would recommend going over to your navlog and taking a look and seeing what uh, altitude they're going to have you cruising at. Uh, since it's just short, short, short flight, about 30 minutes of that, um, I'm going to stick with just 9,000 since we're not going to be going up high. Another thing is, this isn't the true nav log yet since we haven't chosen ILS yet. What we want to do is, this is uh, where you're going to arrive, basically, like from what kind of direction into the airport, I believe. Please correct me if I'm wrong. I would like to say that I'm not an official pilot, but uh, I well I used to stream quite a bit. Uh, I've had uh, pilots come into my Twitch, uh, teach me, educate me, and what have it on different various planes and such. Uh, I do have over 300 hours clocked into the last one, real hours. Uh, no skipping, just straight flying. Um, anyways, what you want to do, this is the runway you're going to choose for said uh, arrival. We want to choose any one of the ILS. Uh, it does I, different runways fade different ways. Um, usually they're identical, like L is uh, parallel to uh, 11, uh, 17, and you know, at least two are parallel. Sorry, my bad. Anyways, choose an ILS. You notice how your points will change now a little bit, and you'll see how so how it's not 9,000 straight in all the way. That's what we want. Later video, I will show you guys how to do uh, takeoff from parking and stuff like that. Um, that'll be later, later, later. Anyways, this is what you want for an ILS, and also I'll get to autopilot. I know, some of you are probably here just for autopilot. Anyways, let's sit back. Let's click over here. The type of airplane I'll be using today is a turboprop Dyer TBM 930. I uh, have uh, extensive use with the Beechcraft here and this one. I prefer this one just due to the fact that you don't have two throttle sticks. It's a little bit easier to control. Uh, less service range which sucks and endurance, but it has the same max altitude and it's faster. Um, also, it's a little bit more modern, I find. More of like a uh, sports... Nah, just like a modern car. Modern plane, in a sense. You'll see once we get in. Anyways, my call sign, 7355. Savior. Woo! Savvy. Uh, weight balance. We don't need to mess with any of this because we're not going far, but you can change up stuff. We'll go through that later, perhaps. Another video. Once that's all, check -roo. we go to flight conditions. I use live, 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 because I like to live dangerously and lively. So once we chose the ILS over here, let's explain the ILS part a little bit. You can see how it actually made us here. If we chose a different one, it's going to change it inwards, right? Um, just like that. So if I want to come downwind and upwind a little bit, I would choose that one. But since I want to come in basically like a with the wind on my back. Uh, this is what I'm gonna be choosing. Since wind comes in um, like this way, I believe, or it's it's kind of ish that, like that. <laughs> Anyways, let's see, runway, departures, direct. All right, we've got the essentials done. Let's start loading this bad boy up. Wait for the real, real weight. Probably edit this out, maybe. 
Who knows? I don't. Maybe I'll just talk to you guys. Um, so what else? Uh, you should know how to fly a plane a little bit at least if you're watching this video because the autopilot I'll be going into uh, You need to know it's gonna be different for every craft um, This one of course is for the dire Oh boy, please don't crash on me <laughs> And Oh, I can feel it just wanting to destroy my computer and rip it in two. I, I think I'm playing on either medium or ultra high. And I, sh I probably should have turned it down just for the sake of recording and my poor computer's life. My GPU. But uh, here we are. Also, a great thing with this plane is it has, um, well, one has a navigational computer on it. Uh, and if you know how to use it right, you can set your own nav logs and your own uh, other options in it, like checking weather, wind, where it's coming from. Oh, God. It looks like Edmonton. It's kind of overcast. All right, so choosing this, uh, it usually has most things set up for us already. But uh, one key thing when you first get in your plane that you want to make sure of is um, usually if it's turned off, you're not going to have uh, FMS down here set correctly. Uh, you can see it right there. FMS is basically the way your control panel will, uh, how it will follow your flight, flight pan, which is not popping up in there for some reason. There we are. That's all the flight logs and uh, all the nav points we're going to, which is basically this right here. Uh, so make sure FMS is here. Uh, usually you can control it by, um, uh, well, there's lots of different ways. You can control it down here by the actual, uh, right here, clicky, 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 by the plane itself. Anyways, let's click that on. So the first thing you want to do before taking off is make sure you have flight director on. Usually it's control uh, three on mine um, to go into the autopilot theme. Next thing you want to set is your altitude. I usually like to set it to, you know, we'll go 5K for right now. That's a good K. Uh, you can hit altimeter on. You can put your watt yaw damper on, left to right, controls. Uh, oh shit. I need to get going <laughs> before this guy hits me. So let's get going here. Let's. No, oh, it's not clear. How do you? Come on, parking brake off. How the hell do you think it's clear? I'm on the frickin' runway. No, Empress, do not. All right, we're about to take off. Hopefully not straight into that plane above us. All right, let's take off. Pull back on the throttle, so Ted. Now, since I'm in the air here, uh, what we can do from this point is, really, you want to turn on nav too. Uh, that's going to uh, tune into the nav beacon of where we want to be flying. I'm not turning on autopilot quite yet, just because it's uh, behind me and uh, I don't want to do that quite yet. This is ground control to Major Edmonton. All right, let's crank back over. Roger, Dodger. Oh, 9,000, so right here, he said 9,000, so I'm going to uh, level back out. I'm going to actually turn on the autopilot. Play director on nav on flight AP in that. There we go. Now, since I have nav on and FMS selected, it's going to follow the purple line for me. 
that only determines how I follow it, right? Oh. It wants me to go to 9,000, right? Right now, I'm set at 2,500. So what I want to do is crank this bad boy up to 9,000. I'm using my scroller mouse right now to do this, or you can left click and right click when it changes like that. Once you got that, you have a choice between vertical speed or F, uh, FLC. I'm expediting there, ATC. Right now, I'm explaining things, Jesus. All right. So I turn on vertical speed, I prefer that one myself. I scroll down to raise up the vertical speed indicator, which right now I've set at 2200. I'll go to 2000, because uh, losing speed. Um, and basically, that is the gist of the basic autopilot system. Um, I've got nav set up, so that shows me follow the purple line, woohoo. Flight director controls the whole damn thing. If you don't have flight director on, you're going to follow the sky like a rock. Autopilot engages the actual tool set. Yaw damper controls left and right uh, for pitching. Altitude hold shows right here, usually on the right, right above your throttle. Or, sorry, <laughs> throttle's left. Uh, above your attitude. Whatever, yeah. Uh, VMV is not quite fully implemented in the game, partially in uh, Airbuses and airliners. Uh, this is the, usually for VS it's a little slider, a little knobby thing, you go fun stuff. What else? FLC is the same thing, but um, you use, uh, where is it? Uh, usually FLC is controlled by a not a speed uh, indicator and it might actually switch I haven't actually used FLC on this plane yet but anyways uh, we'll be using approach mode once we get a little bit closer to Calgary and back in course mode is a uh, button exclusive to flight simulator you probably won't ever have it in a real pl plane but it just gets you right right back on course it basically acts for, like all these buttons in this one button um, heading mode is really fun. Uh, basically what this does is you'll see right here, you have a heading 360, your actual heading, and then uh, to the current uh, location of where you're going to, uh, nav point, which is Alkik, which is bearing 136, which is right, 25 nautical miles out. We have estimated time of uh, 10 minutes to get there. So I got plenty of time to explain this. Uh, basically though, what I can do with this is click this button. If you click it in the middle, it synchronizes. That's the same for true for most of these buttons on here, including the barometer, which is important to use. We are at 2992 and 82. I click this, boom. Now we're at 881 again, because our actual bar barometric pressure was off. And you have to, you can only get that when you talk to ATC via the towers and stuff, unless you know it and look it up. Uh, we're almost at 9,000 feet, so you can see the plane is automatically starting to level off here because I have it set to 9,000. And it's going to start holding a 9K for me, like a dream. Next. Uh, ah, let's get back. To, ooh, wait, what? What is... Oh, it just looks like it because of the sun. <laughs> uh, okay. So the heading, get back to it. Uh, heading is good for bush trips. Uh, maybe I'll make a small video on that too. I probably will, of uh, me doing a bush trip. But um, basically, bush trips use a lot of lefts and right, and use a lot more headings and the timers. So if you want to use your heading instead of nav, with like a nav which has been plotted out and planned, you can use heading and then turn it left and right or use your scroller and you can finally tune your uh, your plane your craft to where you want to go um what else uh certain planes will have uh different um settings for autopilot too like this right here could turn off the autopilot uh just a trim if i want or right, right now it, uh, I think, I believe so, this is what it does. There's a lot of buttons on, uh oh, what I hit? That's all right. 
a lot of these buttons don't do much like oxygen uh, there is a lot of like lights and stuff you can press that make a difference uh, what I was saying about this plane being about a little bit more modern is this it, it's leather interior it's got a very nice uh, finish to it Woo. oh crap let's put those uh, flaps up <laughs> I know what I'm doing oh yeah and the gear landing gear that's a good idea too I know what I'm doing teaching you about autopilot not how to raise landing gear or flaps Um, so basically we are, uh, inbound to Calgary, going to these nice, those extra storm clouds. Ah, I can show you another feature of this plane that I love. Go up to MFD, click on weather, bam, we have weather patterns. Double click on the weather thing down the bottom, click here. We can see what kind of weather we are inbound for and oh my god. That is a nasty purple, bumpy, bumpy. That's 15 nautical miles out. That's our next checkpoint, which is a turn in. Okay, so it's not, okay, that's well. Oh man. It looks like it's below us though. I'm gonna go and be going above it. I might hit just, just a smudgeon of it there. I could increase my altitude. With an ILS flight, you have to requ request everything you do um, to ATC. So if I see this coming like I do, I could be like, well, let's just go up an extra 4,000, 5,000, and then I won't have to worry about it all. But let's have some fun and go through that cloud, I think. Pretty sure it's that cloud that I see on the radar. Yeah. Anyways, um, you can zoom in and out most nav navigation computers with these little knobs here. There's little selectors to use. Uh, another, wow. Crap, we're gonna have a storm here in Edmonton soon. Cause wind comes, oh yeah, I'll show you. I'm gonna show you how to do the wind. There's two different ways. Uh, let's go into, a B, B, yeah, PDF settings, there we go. Wind, I like option two. So you can see the wind is now on my HUD here. And it, it, from me, it's going left crosswind at three knots. So the wind is going uh, this way, meaning we will not be having a storm in Edmonton tonight. <laughs> Yay. Unless, well, maybe this will hit us. Boo. So here comes our first checkpoint. It's 5.3 clicks out. Or, well, not clicks, I guess, nautical miles. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, in a later video, I'll show how to actually make flight plans once you've completed one. Like, we can complete this flight plan and make an, another one right, right in here. It's fun. This right here. So, if you guys have any questions about autopilot and how to use it, or if I perhaps miss something, which I might have about specifically autopilot, not my horrible freaking skills of flaps or landing gear, uh, let me know. Um, I mock units is just a way to describe on. I think it uh, changes the. Uh, oh, I guess just suppress it. Uh oh 
Right. It's only for Moloch if you're going faster than uh, one. You'd want to click that. Uh, more for jetliners, if I believe right, or if you have really, really high altitudes. Apparently, this craft is capable of such certain things, I guess. Um, this is the unique thing on here, which I don't really... I mean, it's just one of those miscellaneous buttons. You can control over to the right side or the left side of uh, who... Like, the, the PDF it's following. So, I haven't really played with it, but... Let's find out real quick. Okay, it does come in like there too. I was hoping maybe the right PDF would have a whole different map, a uh, different flight plan that I could load in there and then switch it from left to right over here. That's the one thing I wish I could do in this is like have um, flight plans just load up in here. But, uh,. And you have your bearings and all that too. So, you know, like we can see we're at uh, Rodko, going to Rodko from Alki. So we should be going at a 178 bearing. If I look over here, 179, because we're just smudging off. Uh, so let's, yes. I sure will. Altimeter, yeah. So the altimeter is what I was talking about, the bar, uh, baros. Barometric pressure! And, uh, this is a personal one that's not hooked up to the computer. This is like a instrument built into the plane, I believe. Um, so this one, you can... Oops. That's this control, semi bad. Uh, so you can see, like, from, uh, 2982 what it was, 9800 to 9081... You know, it it has it has an effect, okay? If you're off by a little bit, or you know, by like a point five, you you're in trouble. That's that's a bit. There's like five hundred feet. You're not accurate, especially when you're lying with an ILS. You want your main computer to be right though, because this is what your ILS is going to be going off of. Really, your radio, but uh. um. Oh, wait, what? What the fuck? Did I? Uh, okay, that's interesting. Let's see how far we are. Not too far. Beautiful Alberta country. Sun's going down. Getting there. So for landing with ILS, uh, there is a proper time you want to turn off your autopilot. Um, and that's pretty much like <laughs> right before you land. Uh, if you follow this video, it will also give you the achievement ILS landing. If you have been doing exactly what we're doing with the IFR and all this jazz. If you haven't, you won't get the achievement and whatever. Doesn't really matter. This is just, uh, really, this video is just designed to show you about the autopilot, how to set it up, use the altitude selector. So you select your altitude, your vertical speed, which is this little box right here, up and down, at the rate you want to accelerate and deaccelerate, which we will be using. 
um, to deaccelerate us, or not deaccelerate us, but uh, go down, descend. And of course, let me know if you guys want to see something specific, a uh, plane, jet, that you guys uh, want me to show you how to use. I really wish all these other buttons worked on my, like the timer for example, the timer doesn't freaking work! You gotta come in here, you gotta click on PDFs or timers and hit start for it to work here. Or go into navlog by pressing that and hit start. This button doesn't work. It clicks. It doesn't work. Um, what else? I, I, I love this plane a lot. Definitely one of my favorites. It's very user friendly. It has the nice extra options. Um, has <laughs> the circuit breaker light, like you see it's turned off down there, and then I turn it on. Ding! Nothing you can press, but looks cool. Turn that off. Has a uh, temperature control, so you can change up uh, how hot and cold it is in the cabin. That does not affect you at all. Air condition for the cabin or the passengers. Or, well, it's, I don't really know why it's pilot or uh, just right fan control to where it's going um you can change this here a little bit there's all these buttons you can press mostly except some that don't do jack diddly what else i, I honestly i like how well it's organized just up here too just to like to start it lights start I mean, it's just pretty much left to right. Yeah. I know you got some cool extra buttons in it. Got a little USB charge port right there for your phone. Over behind this yoke. Ooh. Don't want to press that. Don't know what that really does, to be honest. Alternative stack port valve. This is what I was gonna say. I don't. I don't really know. Well, this lets air in because this thing has a cabin pressure and it has pressurized masks on it and oxygen. So if I wanted to, I could. Uh, yeah, I, I could dump the pressure of it with this right here and then turn on the oxygen or something. Or right, here's the mask guards that come off right there those masks it's a uh, an intense plane I, I like it a lot <laughs> it's fun all right so we're in our kind of last final now, if you don't know where your approach starts, what you can do is go up here, go over to uh, travel to, hit uh, approach, and you can see it's right three in. So one, two, three. This is the approach right here. Um, so one, two, three. So it'd be whoop, one or one. Yeah, one, two. So Kilsa, right here is the approach. That's why I want to turn my approach mode on on my uh, AP. Uh, you will want to maintain your throttle when you're doing it too. Autopilot controls the nose, your uh, your trim. Sorry, it controls uh, your yaw. Controls, uh, well, you know, controls a lot, but doesn't control your speed unless 
you turn on VS mode. But that's only your vertical speed, up and down, how fast you ascend and descend, not how fast your engine's actually turning. Like right now we're at 84% torque, 2K RPM. Everything else looks good. Looks great. This is ground control. USB points. Music we can't use. XM radio, rear front. <laughs> That's why I said this plane's look very modern. It has USB ports on it to charge your charge stuff. It has radio, like it's very Yeah. Pirate ever own a plane and get a pilot's license, which I would love to have a pilot's license and do this as a living. And a hobby. I think this would be one of my uh One of my choices in aviation. We've got a little cargo rack back here. A little food tray, I think. This comes up and over, so you can. Just probably want to. Oh. Or is that. Uh... Oh no! That's the stairs to open and get out of this plane. Oh, I see. Learning things as we fly. So sit back, relax, we're just on a small cruise. I'm gonna check out the weather again. Looks like it's all below us. This is the storm that just went through Edmonton. And we had this morning. It wasn't too serious, but. Clouds on top, clouds on bottom. You can tell the, the more stormy clouds, they look like that versus the white fluffy like that. They actually stand out pretty easy, like that right there. Then again, I haven't turned up my clouds. I, I need to do a little more testing with my GPU settings and such stuff. Uh, but yeah, so with conjunction of the autopilot, ILS, and then um, later on I'll show you how to reset your nav log. You can take a plane and fly legitly all across the world. And I do plan on doing that with this. Um, going around the world. I would like to make a little recording of it, you know? It's gonna be kind of, uh, I don't know. It, I'm not sure how to record it, put together, but if anyone has any suggestions, let me know. I'm probably gonna start near like Victoria and BC, and then go to south and loop up around and Greenland and cross. And but. Uh, I don't know how I'm going to record it cuz the game is crashing. I'm you know I'm worried about it might crash even now, right? Uh But uh so far so good and
Okay, we are probably going to start getting instructions from Calgary here in a sec as soon as we hit this next waypoint. And if anyone notices anything I'm doing wrong, please let me know. I consider myself definitely above average, but, uh, you know, always stuff to learn. Eight one, see. So you can either click it like that, or if it's up like that, you can just click on it and it'll auto align it. That goes for most airplanes. You can do that with your uh, barometric presser. I should be having a handoff to Calgary. <laughs> there it is. Autopilot senses the turn. It's turning with it. Keynote: If uh, the purple arrow is on the left side, it means you're far, you're you're too far to the uh, to the to the right of it, and if it's on the right, you're too far to the left of it. So you have to do what it's doing here, and you'll see as I'm getting more on point, it's it's getting more because it's to my left, so it's to my left, right? Uh, since I just passed Pepco, I wanted that right there. So 6,500 feet. So I move it down from 9,000 to 6,500, like so. I turn on vertical speed after I set my altimeter. I scroll up to give me a negative, a negative uh, that. I'm pulling off my throttle right now too. I'm going to uh, really drop it down quick here. I'm going to acknowledge him because I said I've got to go on ILS runway 11, which is what we pre-programmed in prior to taking off. Sometimes you might have to loop around or stuff, but uh, usually it hasn't been a problem yet. They haven't said like it's not clear. So everything's good there. We're losing our uh, altitude. Speed's going down too a little bit because I, I I dropped off the throttle a lot. We're at 44. Uh, where's Calgary? Calgary. Uh, should be right. Yeah. Clouds are blocking it. So ILS is an instrument landing system and basically ATC with your landing system work conjunction to bring you in straight and frickin narrow. Uh, so it takes out the guessing of having to turn into airports. Not all airports will be equipped with ILS because you do need the uh, airport needs special ILS equipment to, to do that. And so, you know, not everything will have that, but. Uh, when taking off and landing, most planes have a uh, takeoff, TO, takeoff, and a landing, LGL. -E. Mode for flaps. Even the throttle. Oh, what's this? Takeoff and general aviation. Ooh, mysterious button I want to press, but I'm recording. So I, I don't think it's a, I know what this, it's a takeoff mode and a general AV. I wonder if I'm in like takeoff mode still somewhere and I just don't know it. The plot thickens. <laughs> All right, let's speed up a little bit here. Uh, for those of you wondering, I am using keyboard and mouse. <laughs> I don't know, I like it. I, I do use used to use a controller on my last flight sim, but I just haven't got around to it yet here. Cause you gotta learn. You want to click, 
There's lots to click. Make hot airflow. Let's increase it towards the cabin. Ha 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 ha. Does nothing. Actually, that will help with de-icing. I want it towards the windshield, though, versus the legs and the ports. Alright, where are we? We're at Pep. Can't I? Oh, no, no, right. Yeah, we're coming in between these two right now. We're at 6,500 feet, correct. Where's Cowtown? Right between the line there. Still through the clouds. All right. <sighs> So let's go over the last things that we're doing here. I gotta lower the landing gear, of course. I gotta do my flaps down once I'm there. I feel comfortable enough about doing it. I want to take off nav mode and turn on to a APR mode. Only one of these can be active at one time. It'll be lit up, right now it's nav. I click APR, it's gonna light up on there, or heading. Just like these lines, they separate the autopilot functions from from the other parts. Like this, you can only have one button in here on. Altimeter, VS, VMV, actually VMV can be on with all of them. Uh, VLC and speed is just uh, indicator mode. So it's like between like IS, indicated airspeed, and uh, mock units. Uh, adjust course to left and right. Um, I'm not really sure if that works to be honest. I imagine it would, but I'm not too sure. But I gotta play around that a little more. I am, yeah. CSR one and CSR two. We're on CSR, CSR right now, so I'm not too sure. See, KSIL, you can turn your uh, bearing on. KSIL is exactly left of us, which you can see now right there. Ooh, another cool thing. You click in here. Where? Come on. Damn it. There we go. You get this little pointer. You can move. You can actually put the pointer on the <laughs> screen here and move it around like this on this plane. It's cool. Anyways, all right, let's back out of that. Let's zoom in a little. Oops, what the heck's going on? Zoom in a little, thank you. Reset camera. Someone's house. Probably a glitch though, looks, these three buildings look the same. This is ground. Those are some low clouds. Oh man, this is gonna suck. Oh, that's gonna suck. Oh, that's gonna suck. Crap. So we're flying right into the storm. Landing in this, <laughs> and this is why we use ILS. <laughs> oh man! All right, great example. Yeah, we're, well, we might miss a little bit of it, but it's it's already starting to get a little bumpy. Do, 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 do. 
All right, here in a moment, once we get to queso, he should say to like lower down to 4K, 3K. Um, he'll say you're clear for this runway. Uh, we'll put our landing gear. We'll still have autopilot on. We'll be switching over to approach navigation or approach mode. I lower my speed pretty much, and then we kind of coast on in. That's 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 uh, how you use autopilot ILS and do landing with ILS. Uh, this is an IFR flight instrument flight rules. So I guess you don't have to do an IFR to do an ILS landing, but no, yeah, you do because the ATC won't talk to you. And may, no, yeah, you, you can't even choose ILS if you don't do IFR. So. On the last sim, you actually had to tune in with the, the radio com. Oh, here we go. Roger, Dodger. Rubber ducky. I'm going to cut back on the engine a little. Sun coming in right through the cabin. This game's awesome. Simulation's awesome. Alright, we are now on to Kaysil. I'm going to actually, well, I could hit it. Hit approach mode. We're on approach mode now. Still descending, we're gonna hit that cloud. Maybe. The plane will stop, should stop around here. Should level us out. Whew! Storm's above us. See if we went back to the map here. Like this, it should be yeah above us. And there's that little rough piece we just went under us, but besides that, clear weather. Where is it? Oh, there's the runway right there. That's lined us up for. Uh, let's see here. The wind is going three knots, two knots left. That's why the uh, the autopilot has us kind of shifting a little bit to the right to counteract that. I, I, I believe that's a part of the approach autopilots uh, like computer logic just not like nav nav would like veer left and then start veering right again veer left and veer right I approaches once we're in a uh, IK dog I'm gonna deploy my uh, landing gear hello Calgary Driven through you a few times, never visited you. Really need to make the time to do that one of these days. Not during a pandemic, though. All right, I'm gonna kill off the power. Lo Ooh, lagging, lagging. Don't crash. Oh God. Please don't crash. I am inbound. I'm very much inbound. I'm gonna lower my landing gear now. Tune in the tower. Oh god, this leg. Recording and doing this is. Oh, see, Altimer is 2966. We're way off. Look at that. We're off by about 200 feet. Wind's at 249, so it's coming out at 249. The uh, approach and ILS just shifted me down there to get a, a much... Oh. All right. Altimeter should be off. Or... Fuck. 
Nope, no, 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 hit approach. Oh god, what am I doing? Keep on approach. Don't do what I just did there. Basically, you want to keep your approach mode on all the way. I'm uh, decelerating here too. Laying off on the. Uh... Actually, we'll just kill it all the way. Landing gear is down. Uh, flaps are about to go up. Oh, that dude does not know how to. Oh my god. <laughs> Look at him go! Look at him go! He doesn't. He's trying to fly that Airbus. Oh, he's about to crash! Oh, how is he still alive? Oh, no, that's it. Alright, focus on the task at hand. Uh, th at this point, we want to turn flight director off and autopilot off. We want to take mana control. And we built the city. Oh, I should probably. Yeah, I'll put my flaps on it. Oh, God, I'm doing what that dude just did. No! That guy totally distracted me. Oh, fuck. Come on, Darius! Get the bird on the ground! Bird on the ground. Hit the brakes. Hit oh. Alright, that was a horrible landing, but we did land, so there's that. Okay. And uh, that is how you land with an ILS. Um, don't get distracted by airliners doing barrel rolls and jumping off a tarmac like that, because that's just distracting as hell and nearly cost me my flight. But, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or thoughts, let me know. Um, appreciate you guys watching. I will be doing more of these videos, especially with you guys. Let me know what you would like to see. And I hope you enjoyed. Uh, name's Tarius, and you guys have yourselves a good one.